One of the first steps in training the mind is learning how this conscious mind of ours works. We have this amazing mechanism of power, and yet hardly anybody knows how to do it. I mean, no instruction book came, comes with it. I mean, think about it. Nothing. We're taught, do the best you can. Think positive. I mean, do the best you can? Think positive? There's a whole science here. There's a whole science to learn. And so in the very beginning stages, we want to learn about how does this conscious mind of ours work? And there's three interesting features of the conscious mind that I want you to be aware of. The first interesting feature of the conscious mind is that it's in constant motion. It's always thinking thoughts. It's like a machine with no off switch. It's like thinking thoughts over and over and over again. It's a thought thinking machine. That's the first thing to understand about the conscious mind is that it's in constant motion. The second thing to understand about the conscious mind is that it's what I call the great trickster. And what do I mean by the great trickster? is that your mind will trick you and fool you and limit you in innumerable ways that you and so often our mind will tell us something is going to happen to us and it doesn't happen especially you know oh you're going to lose your job or oh uh, yeah, you're going to be getting in trouble here or this is going to happen or that's going to happen so often the mind just makes up stuff tells you it's going to happen and it doesn't happen and yet our mind told us tells us it's going to happen sometimes our mind lies to us tells us outright flagrant lies that we can't even believe what our own mind tells us. Let me step back. Let me approach this once again. I want you to really get this. You can't even believe what your own mind tells you because your mind is the great trickster you have to be very very diligent and your mind knows you oh so well your mind knows everything about you it knows your secret fears it knows your inadequacies it knows your vulnerable parts and it likes to play with you like a cat plays with a mouse and it will take your greatest fear and it will put it up and project it onto you and it will say, look what's going to happen to you. It's amazing the mind would do that, eh? Why does the mind do that? Stay tuned. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Um, the third interesting feature of the conscious mind is that there's a lot of useless thought inside it. Worry, fear, anxiety, negatives, a lot of useless thought going on. Now, fears can be uh, valuable, like it's a good, healthy fear to be afraid to jump. You're on safari, you don't want to go ride a, a lion or something. That's a, that's a good, healthy fear. But that's not the type of fears I'm speaking of. I'm speaking afraid to try something new, afraid of something that might happen to you. There's a lot of fear going on inside the mind. And so what it is, is that we are living our life, our, 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 our very important life. And this is an important life. This is not the practice run, folks. This isn't practice. This is real-time event called 
my life. And here we are. We're living our life. And we're living it through a mechanism that is in constant motion. Through a mechanism that is the great trickster fooling us, lying to us, through, through a lot of useless thought. And so what happens is that we wake up in the morning and immediately it starts thinking thoughts. All thinking thoughts. Well, I wonder what's going to happen at work today. And okay, I've got all these things to happen. I've got to go to the work and I'm probably going to have this problem at work and that. And I don't even know what I'm doing at that job or not. I should quit. But what I quit or what am I going to do? And then I've got all the bills. And I'm, well, what's my wife going to say? And oh, I don't even know what's happening in our relationship now. All these things. We should, maybe, maybe I should just leave it. Well, what do you mean leave it? It's the best thing that ever happened to me. And then, and then all I got to work, and then I have to think, and then I'm at work, and I'm, I'm doing all these things, and I got this problem difficulty, and then, then oh no, but it's all okay, and then oh no, I'm good, and I have to do a call over here, and all the time driving. I wonder what that thing is in my throat, you know, that might be something happening to me. I should be, better go and see the doctor. It could be really bad. It could be, oh, it's probably nothing there. But there you are, you're dismissing it. You don't know, do you? It's a, maybe it's a great trickster, maybe it's not, and then I have to go to work, and then I'm driving home. Well, what am I supposed to pick up at home and go? And then I'm going to go home, and oh God, the kids are having so much problem, aren't they? Oh, what am I going to do with them? I mean, is it any wonder that we get a little overwhelmed? <laughs> because that's what's going on. The mind is in constant motion. It's the great trickster. It's a lot of useless thought. And so what we need to do, and this is basic training, folks. What we need to do is to get control of our mind. And you begin to get control as soon as you recognize how out of control you are. And what I recommend that you do is that several times every day, you just stop and observe yourself. Observe the thoughts that are going through your mind so that you can become familiar with how this mind works. And there are four techniques, four very important techniques for eliminating negatives from the mind. Because we're going to have to weed this garden of ours. And the mind is like a rich, fertile inner garden. And we, want, we have to get involved in getting rid of all these negatives. And there's four excellent, wonderful techniques for eliminating negatives from the mind. And it makes no difference to the mind whether you think constructive thoughts or destructive thoughts. It makes no difference to the mind. It makes all the difference to you. It makes all the difference to your life. It makes all the difference to the things that are going to happen to you, but it makes no difference to the mind. Now, here I'm speaking of you and your mind as if they're different. And that is what you're going to discover. And what a radical change in awareness when you realize that you are not your mind, you're not your mind. Just like you're not your hand, your hand is a part of you. You're not your feet, your feet are a part of you. You are not your mind. Your mind is a part of you. It's not you. And because we've identified ourselves with our mind, we have to listen to everything it says. We assume that everything that our mind tells us is true because we think we're our mind and we're not our mind. And this is going to be a huge shift for you when you fully get and understand that I am not my mind. And then you understand, oh, I have to train my mind. And yes, you have to train your mind. Because what's happened is the mind is totally out of control. And so you train it. And one of the ways that we train it is beginning to eliminate 
all the negatives that happen to us because it makes no difference to the mind whether we think constructive thoughts or dis. Get that. It doesn't matter to the mind. The mind only wants and needs to think thoughts. What those thoughts are, it does not matter to the mind, but it matters to you.